WrestleMania Fever was clearly live and still in full effect tonight, Monday Night Raw. The last four or five years, the night after WrestleMania has always been, in some ways, bigger than the actual WrestleMania. And this night did not disappoint. Daniel Bryan comes out to celebrate his win last night, and the fans were super into it. Like, wow. I've heard some people question whether, because of how much we've been behind Daniel Bryan, that if he finally did win the belt, will his love from the fans still be as big? And tonight, answer that question. Yes, yes, yes. It was crazy. Everyone loved it. But it wasn't even 10 minutes until Triple H came out to try and ruin his moment. He made a match, a title match, with Bryan defending in the main event against, of course, himself. What a surprise. Now, the first match of the night, the Wyatts versus John Cena, Sheamus, and Big E in a six-man tag. The crowd for this match, yeah, they were crazy all night. But this match especially, wow. Not only were they booing Cena, which shouldn't be too much of a surprise, but they were also booing Sheamus and Big E. Actually, Big E might have won them over a little bit with some of his moves because he's that good. But I feel bad for a guy like Sheamus, you know? You feel like ever since he's returned, he's never really gotten the crowd fully behind him. And because he teamed with Cena tonight, it wasn't that loud either. But the Wyatts were, were on fire. The people love the Wyatts tonight. And they should. Bray Wyatt got the win, pinning Big E. Good match. We got a mixed tag team match, and I've probably seen this match at least 25 times, but what can you do? It was Fandango, Summer Rae versus Santino and Emma. It was still a good match because, one, it was quick, and two, the crowd actually Fandangoed. Something we haven't seen since, what, last year after WrestleMania? But like I said, the crowd was into it. Emma got the the submission on Summer, which I'm at the point now where I want to see Emma wrestle other divas. I know Emma's good. Let's have them give her the chance to show that. Now, the next segment was very hard to watch. It, it just, as much as my heart was crushed, seeing Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman come out to brag and talk trash about conquering the streak, ending Taker's streak once and for all. It's obviously something I never thought I'd see, but just hearing them, Paul Heyman is, is too good of a talker for me to ignore it, for me to just not feel the heartbreak almost all over again. Clearly, I haven't gotten over it. I don't know how I can get over it. The fact that this streak is no longer intact hurts. The fact that it was Brock Lesnar hurts even more. And Paul Heyman sure does know how to rub in a moment like that. Now, they showed a promo for Adam Rose. Actually, two promos tonight. I know they showed a promo for Bo Dallas, but honestly, who really cares? Adam Rose, I've seen him on NXT. His character is so over the top and crazy and... I'm actually looking forward to his debut on Raw. That's going to be just insane. Now, earlier, Batista and Orton were complaining that Triple H was getting the title shot. They wanted the title shot. And Stephanie tried to calm them down. And she put them in a tag team championship match. Okay. Against the Usos. So that match happened. I was very nervous for the Usos. I'm thinking to myself, if they have them lose the belts after this soon of being champions and it looked like they were just going to dominate them and I'm sitting there like why can't we have a legit tag team beat two guys who aren't a real tag team just because they're two big main eventers doesn't mean they should dominate every tag team how many times have we seen that but no they get counted out so at least they didn't win the belts then we have a huge return Rob Van Dam yes Mr. Monday Night makes his return. He fights Damian Sandow, who unfortunately got the Zack Ryder treatment. He was already in the ring. It was a decent match. He held his own, but of course, Rob Van Dam got the win. Awesome to see him back. I will admit that. Now, speaking of return to the ring, Bad News Barrett. Finally, he wasn't in the Battle Royal. 
Hell, Rob Van Dam didn't return in the Battle Royal for some dumb reason. But Bad News Barrett makes his in-ring return after God knows how long against Rey Mysterio. I feel bad for Rey Mysterio that he got booed as much as he did. But Bad News Barrett was so over, he got the win. Probably deserved. Um, now speaking of, well, not really a return, more of a raw debut. Alexander Rusev, another guy, again, not in the Battle Royal. But he made his debut. He beat Zack Ryder. Surprise, surprise. Destroyed him. Dominated him. Is Lana, like, the hottest chick ever? Or at least, I don't know, something about the skirt and the, and the accent. The Russian... All right, let's move on. Because I'm getting carried away. Ultimate Warrior comes out in, like, nearly 20 years since the last time he's been on Raw. Yeah, it wasn't the same to see him suit... No face paint come out to that music. But then, when he got into the ring, he put the jacket on, he put the warrior mask on, and he got into character. Granted, half of what he said, I didn't understand what the hell he was saying. But that's warrior. That's classic warrior. That It, it felt like 1989 all over again. That was cool. Now, a AJ comes out to talk trash, to brag about winning that whatever Divas match last night. I don't blame her. I was glad that she won. She's at like 295 days. Wow. Then Paige comes out from NXT. Wow. Was not expecting that. Paige is congratulating her. AJ sort of tries to bitch her out. She slaps her, says, we're gonna fight for the title. Quick match where Paige actually wins the Divas title. Wow. A little disappointed that it was so quick, but it was cool. It was surprising. I love that Paige made her debut. I love that she's actually on the main roster now. She's one of the best divas that they have, and she's only 21 years old. I'm looking forward to seeing the longer pay-per-view matches that these two hopefully have, starting with Extreme Rules. I'm looking forward to that. Good job, Paige. Now, Hogan comes out to present the Andre the Giant trophy to Cesaro for winning last night. Cesaro comes out with Zeb Coulter, by the way, for some reason. But as Zeb Coulter's hogging Mike time, Cesaro cuts him off and says, You know what? I'm not a Zeb Coulter guy. I'm a Paul Heyman guy. And who comes out? Paul Heyman. Now, Cesaro's with Paul Heyman. Wow. I did not see that coming at all. That was awesome. And I think Cesaro is the next big thing. At least give it another six to eight months, maybe a year. He will be the next world champion. He deserves it. He's so over. Um, Swagger comes out and then breaks the Andre the Giant trophy. How much more messed up can you get than that? Like, this is a brand new trophy. He hasn't even had it for a day. And he broke it. Just shattered it. During the app, I saw Brad Maddox come out, and he made a match. Cesaro, Swagger, right now. They went at it for a little bit, but Swagger pussied out, like the crowd said, and he left. So you know that's going to keep continuing. Now, backstage, we saw Stephanie trying to tell Shield and Kane, forget about what happened last night. We're going to work together. We're going to make sure Triple H wins the belt tonight. Kane, in his excited or pissed off manner, he admits to the S.H.I.E.L.D. that Triple H was the one that told him to attack them. Oops. Cut till later on. Daniel Bryan comes out ready to defend the belt. Batista and Orton come out. They take Bryan out. Uh, Kane comes out, chokes him and Bryan. Triple H comes out, looks like he's about to win. They, they ring the bell. S.H.I.E.L.D. comes out. And that was awesome. Yeah, we didn't have the match, the title match, but who gives a shit? We got a moment. Shield, if if anyone was confused on whether or not they were face or not, they they cemented that tonight. They speared Triple H, they took out Batista and Orton, and Brian hit Triple H. That was that was awesome. I would love for this to turn into a Shield versus Evolution scenario. I doubt that would happen, but just imagine that. The, the level that the Wyatts and Shield was, that could be just as big. I loved Raw tonight. 
it shouldn't be too much of a surprise because it was the night after WrestleMania, and history has shown that that's the night to watch. This was the Raw of the year. Probably the best Raw that we'll get all year. I had fun with it. Anyways, guys, let me know in the comments below. What did you think of Raw? Are you still sort of mourning the end of the streak? There was no Taker tonight. No Sting, like the rumor said, but time will tell what what's to come for The Undertaker. It's sad, but it's a reality. Thanks for watching, guys. Like and subscribe. Later.